Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Kashif Booth Podcast. If you're new here, each week I sit down with the guests and we discuss their career so far, the highs, the lows, and what's next for them. Today's guest is Delvine Pitt. She is a multifaceted creative from London. It's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Good, it's great to have you on. It's so funny because you're like the second person who I'm interviewing this season who I've met through TikTok. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no, so funny. Uh, every single time your TikToks come up, I'm like, 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 <laughs> like, as much as possible. But yeah, it's great. Same, same, same. Because I think the booth creatives just sharing our knowledge and you know in this whole industry yeah. as well. Because I interviewed a guy called um Anwar Ali. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's like this American TikToker. He's got like over a hundred k, but he's an actor as well. So I was like, okay, oh, get you on here too. So, but it's good to have you on. And it's so funny because we've ran in the same circles, but never knew of each other. <laughs> um, I yeah, yeah like... I, And I saw someone the other day and I was like, oh yeah, you know, Kashif. And he was like, yeah, I do. I'm a filmmaker. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So like, yeah, it's such a small world. <laughs> I would say like, when you're black and a creative in London, yeah, it's, it's bound to... Tiny. It's, it's very, very tiny. So it's bound to happen. So yeah, yeah but it's just funny because I worked with your cousin, Jordan. Yep, you did. projects as well, and he's been on the the show as well. Like I interviewed him last season as well. Oh, amazing! Oh, whole I, thing. Probably, I probably should watch that. He probably <laughs> scared me out. Like, why haven't you watched it? Okay. <laughs> he probably saw it and was like, "Okay, yeah, I mentally put that there, but it's fine." <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about you. How did you get started? Because you are multifaceted. You're not. You're an actor. If you are still acting, you're a puppeteer. You're an author like stop me because like you do so it's much crazy so... and, do you know what I don't know where where do things start I've always been creative like since being a child um like always kind of been in like in school it was always like art was my thing but I was really shy as a child in fact I had like selective mute so I wasn't very confident enough to like act or people didn't really see me as like an actress or a performer at all so but it wasn't until um I was uh maybe 16 I studied production and also with my church I was doing like puppetry stuff very much kind of behind hiding behind but everyone loved my puppetry and obviously I was really good at like the production and film stuff so I went to uni to carry on with the production and film but then I think during uni that's when my confidence grew quite a lot and I was like, I don't know whether I want to be just behind the camera. I don't mind being in front of the camera as well. So with uni, I was doing a little bit of presenting here and there, kind of, because I've never done acting before. I was kind of like, okay, let's just give this a go, see how it goes. And um, finished uni, worked in the industry, like the film industry, like did the whole runner thing. Mm -hmm. Then I started working in sales, but I was like, I had this itch, like I want to, do acting like I really want to do acting so I decided to kind of go like to part-time drama school identity which a lot of black actors went to yes, yes. especially back in the day and it's amazing to see some people and how much they've grown since like going because I went in like 2010 so all the kind of icons were there at that time yeah. and yeah and I started to fall in love with acting um it, it was it was because it was part-time it was literally two days a week mm -hmm. and then um Femi the leader of identity he really liked me as well so you know I did really well at identity but I knew I wanted to go full-time and do it properly so um I decided to go to drama school and I also wanted to travel so I went to drama school in America oh nice was there for I went to the Stella Adler studio, studio of acting um I was there for two and a half three years so um just to train properly as an actress just to have like proper credits in a way mm -hmm. um, and then when I came back to actually no when I was in America I did a lot of facilitation alongside drama school and that was connected to the drama school okay. so we went to prisons we went to wow. schools mm -hmm. um yeah I went to Rikers Island which is always like my thing I'm like I went to Rikers guys <laughs> <laughs> it's always my two truths and a lie like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um and um I yeah so I did that for um I was there for three years and then one day I was like oh my gosh I used to do puppetry in church I wonder if I can make a puppet and do something with that, especially now I'm going to drama school and stuff. So I made an, a Nancy puppet and we went to a um, children's bookshop and did a Nancy um, story, but came back to England, still was kind of lost in what I wanted to do. Had this nine to five, 
didn't work out at all. Um, and I was like, okay, now's probably my chance to do the puppetry thing. Like I lost that job and I was like, I still got this bug. I still want to do acting. Now's my chance to just go all out. So I set up my company and I wasn't sure what to do with the puppetry. Like I wasn't sure what route we needed to go down. And, but what I did, I was like, okay, well this is Halloween was coming up. So I thought, okay, I'm going to set up like a Halloween themed puppet show, put some posters up outside, didn't really advertise properly. Then um, all of a sudden, literally 50 or 60 people turned up to the wow. show. Wow. I was like, oh my gosh. It was a disaster because no, I stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a disaster. And the worst thing is, oh. it was that um I just registered my business, just put it on Google, and I was like, I'm doing this puppet show kind of thing, guys. When I looked on Google, there was one star because obviously I didn't really know what I was doing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it was terrible. No. And yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how like British people are, they will never tell you to your face, like, oh, oh that was really bad. But they would go on Google and they would say, <laughs> <laughs> this was bad, oh, terrible, yeah, don't ever yeah, turn yeah. up to this thing. Um, and then like, yeah, so it ended up being kind of really, really bad. But then I thought, okay, yeah. like, I need to kind of go away, really structure my things properly. And then, um, yeah, and then see how it goes. And then it it started to become really, really well. The it was ended up being a toddler group really really successful again because there was a need and a demand for it most of the time it sold out okay. and the lockdown happened so I had to stop that mm. <laughs> but I remembered I have a degree in production and so I went to start putting a lot of um like my puppetry online specifically talking about um teaching kids about diversity teaching kids about black British history in particular and it was really well received and also I got an agent as well on the back of that. So I started doing a lot of acting. It, it, yeah. So it's, it's become this whole thing rather than me just being in one box. But because I have ADHD, it works out really well because I can just do loads of different things. And that's generally how my brain works. So it works for me. So, yeah. And that's kind of my story. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing story. I love hearing all of that. Very detailed, which is good. Because most people, listen, they'll just give you a summary or one word answer. It's, and it's so boring. But I loved how uh, full that was. And it's so good to hear your journey. And I love hearing how you kind of grew through your confidence as well. And where you start off. Because a lot of people don't realize that like creatives are a lot of the time very introverted and very shy and and they think but you're creative that that can't be true it's like there's a lot of us like that who are reserved and know when to perform but we like to kind of keep to ourselves and I love that how it helped you kind of grow in confidence and then you started to flourish I loved hearing how you failed I mean people always talk about you know like the kind of um what's the way it's very corny and like buzzworthy that like you've got to fail but you failing <laughs> your first puppeteer show really shaped you for where you are now because look what you've been able to do so that's a really yeah. good um journey so tell me about why you decided to kind of focus on black british history when it came to your puppeteering because i as you know from my tiktok i'm always talking about black british history because i think it's very important people don't know our history and people just will act like we don't have anything it's like what are you talking about it's right here and you know how yeah. british history they like to sweep things under the rug and act like <laughs> nothing happened so tell me about why you decided to do that yeah I think because a lot of the time whenever I used to do like school performances or school shows it would just be like oh it's black history month let's just do something quickly on uh Martin Luther King oh yeah, yeah. There, we go. <laughs> King, there we go Rose Parks yeah yeah like um but I don't relate to that like I do yeah. because it's black but then that's still not my story it's not my journey exactly but it, I, I need to i need to see and hear more mm -hmm. stories from my background because I, we're, we're so underrepresented a lot of americans don't even know we exist <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. it's like, why are we being taught their history when they they don't even have a clue about ours you know so i was just like okay there needs to be something and it needs to happen start from a young age too yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why I thought, okay, there needs to be something that teaches children about Black British history specifically, not American. Although sometimes I'm tempted to just to reach a wider audience, mm. but I'm like, but I know I need to kind of yeah. keep to 
to mm-hmm. what I am, um, what, what I advocate for. So yeah, that's how it happened. That's good. And it's really important because it's true. Every Black History Month, we're learning about the U.S slave trade we're learning about the u.s civil war we're learning about all of the u.s civil rights leaders which is amazing and what they did for american people is great but what they did didn't impact all of us and you know across the world so we need to highlight the black pioneers who did it within our country and within us as caribbeans you know from that history as well because we have our own history and our own culture from our perspective and that needs to be taught to kids today and it's not even just black kids it's everybody needs to understand because like I said before it's like Britain has this way of sweeping things under the rug that you know Mm -hmm. they're they're basically telling us what we didn't have anything to do with slavery what are you talking about (laughs) you were the biggest people (laughs) a part of the transatlantic slave trade what are you talking about (laughs) but they want to act like what it wasn't me it wasn't me personally it's like yeah but you still like the history of this country why do you think it's so rich why you had the biggest empire ever like ever (laughs) you want to be telling us what so i think it's great what you're doing and it's so important for young kids to know this because they need to know their history i think with the way we're in this modern world it's like people don't know things nowadays like because everybody can consume what they want they don't know the history or the past of things so I think yeah. it's really good what you're doing so how is it enriching for you though like what's it like being in these spaces and being able to do that um it's it's been so like completely enriching like it's just been uh-huh. re- rewarding the amount of things that have happened to me since kind of just deciding I'm just gonna write a song and put it on YouTube mm-hmm. see what happens and the doors that have opened on on the back of that, as I said, um, I put something on YouTube. BBC Children's Lights in. We're like, oh my gosh, we you know we could do with you working here or your expertise, expertise. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just become it's nice. It's nice to see that there's this finally um, a message being brought out there. Finally, you know, finally, children are learning about their own history too. No, that's yeah. really good. I love that. I love that. And so from that, how has that helped you in terms of like your career? Like where are you going to take it? Because we're working on something fun at the moment, which we're hoping to, you know, expand. So like how, where do you want to take it and what's your kind of goals for it? Yeah, so I'm producing a live show, um, a Black British puppet show um, that's going to tour around in schools. Um uh, like around right now it's going to tour around in um, London but hopefully we'll tour around in the UK as well mm-hmm. so that's what it's there for and, mm-hmm. and yeah hopefully it'll come out in October yeah nice. I'm really excited nice. yes yes exactly it's really <laughs> important really important it's just really important so I love that what you're doing so tell me about this moment so you have a TikTok platform and yeah. you went viral back in what was it 2022 for yeah. recording your niece's reactions to you being in a uh, disenchanted so what was that like what was that like to have like, yeah. a massive viral video because it's so sweet because I remember seeing oh my God. Well, my oh, time, right? so like what was that like do you know what even the disenchanted thing I know it was like a yeah. tiny smallest smallest role yeah, yeah, but it was yeah. the biggest deal for me because it was like yeah. I auditioned for the role on um a like a Friday, I remember it was a Friday. Friday morning, I sent in the self tape. Friday evening, my agent called me and said, you need, you've got the role, you need to be there on Tuesday. <laughs> so like, it was the space of like, how your life can change in like a week is actually crazy. Yeah, and yeah. As I said, it was the tiniest, tiniest role, but it made the biggest impact. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, when the film came out, um, my, yeah, I was like, you know, I need to film my nieces, like, I need to get the reactions. Like, will they even recognize me? Like, yeah. I need to get the reactions. And I was nervous when I was filming it as well. I was like, okay, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? But their reaction was perfect. Mm-hmm. It was like perfect. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, I got it. Like, it was amazing. And then obviously, I thought, okay, let me put this online. Mm-hmm. Let's see how it goes. Hundred thousand views. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Check back a million I'm like no it's hit a million and all these like followers were just coming and coming and coming mm-hmm. and I was like oh my gosh like mm-hmm. constant 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 mm-hmm. and then it hit five two three four five and I was like this is crazy wow um and, and it's just like even just mm-hmm. the form in general I just go on there and I chat absolute nonsense and it's just like yeah the reception sometimes things get and like I'm like okay cool but that video in particular just mm-hmm. 
completely blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, it didn't go further. Like we couldn't do any more with my nieces because their mum was like, I don't really want to put kids all over the internet. That yeah, much. Course, they're already out there. Yeah, that's yeah, enough yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah, and I respect that as well. Like, she, yeah. Otherwise, you know, they'll, you'll see them more. But my yeah. niece, like. Uh, sister-in-law's like nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't totally understand. I get it because people are just weird, and the mm-hmm. way people will be taking fo- like people who post their children online, they'll be taking the pictures and passing us there. You know, people are just weird. So yeah, I totally weird. get that. But that's such a nice moment, and it was good because you know, like sometimes when you're even in a small role in a big film like that, mm-hmm. you might not even know if you made the final cut. So like, was that in the back of your mind as well? Oh like gosh. watching it? I was like this, like, please come, please come. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> but I had a feeling they would because it was reshoots that we did. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, so okay. it was reshoots, so it was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a feeling. Mm-hmm. And also I, the director at the time, he was really happy with my scene. And, you know, he was really, the way he was responding, he was yeah. really, really happy. So I was okay. like, okay. okay. But, um, but yeah, it was nice to be, mm-hmm. I said on the Friday it was the audition wow. by the following Friday I was on the big set at Pinewood Studios Disney extras were there me and Patrick Dempsey were scene buddies it was just like I still can't believe it <laughs> yeah. <Really>? like, <laughs> is this my life like is this real like <laughs> is this happening? No, it's so good and I just love how you said how quick it was like people don't understand like you know you literally can audition one day and be on set the next day and then you know you're literally having to learn lines or be around all these like massive people like who you've seen on tv and in the cinema and it's like oh oh crap I need to like rehearse lines with him now like people don't understand like and it's that fast turnaround but also that professionalism as well and being yeah. ready and on it you know so what was it like being on set though like what was that whole experience like was that the biggest thing you've done so far I would say so okay yeah, like yeah I would say so yeah. um it was scary not gonna lie because again I wasn't really and because acting isn't like mm-hmm. it's my thing but it's I think right then I was still focused on like mm-hmm. working at the BBC and um and my my stuff like very much my stuff mm-hmm. whereas I think if I was really engrossed in like this is my acting world is what I want to do mm-hmm. Thing, mm-hmm. then it will be it'll be probably would have been different but anyway yeah. it was scary um because like especially the first day with the big American directors mm. and big I'm gonna say big American because Americans are loud let's let like they, are, they, <laughs> they have such prison. massive personalities have, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to do something it's that's it like mm. um so I remember getting there like okay go go it was very go 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 now mm, now mm, mm. type of attitude and I was like um, okay I'm like <laughs> this is what you want here's your script you've got the line this is what you gotta do you gotta you start here and you run to the end and I was like okay but you got to kind of put on a brave face like okay yeah, 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 what yeah. I'm doing mm-hmm. and then Patrick Dempsey came and he was like okay you ready we're practicing scene together mm-hmm. okay go <laughs> you just have to go yeah, and as yeah, I said yeah. it was the space of a week I was still mm-hmm. hadn't mentally yeah 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 like, <laughs> I was like, like what, what I'm about what's to going do on? yeah and <laughs> we, did, we didn't even rehearse it was like mm-hmm. one that was that was that was the rehearsal with practice run okay yeah got it next minute came back on set had 100 extras makeup team was doing my doing my face mm-hmm. it was just crazy and the extras were on one side and I was like guys I'm like I'm one of you like I don't know why I'm here. But not like that but it was like yeah, I wanted yeah, to talk yeah. to them do you know yeah, what I mean but yeah, yeah. they were like no you're on this side and mm-hmm. I was like um so it was just really really overwhelming I can imagine I can imagine yeah. but how yeah. many times did you do it because I've been on these film sets and tv sets listen they'll have you do that like 50 times and it feels like that like how was it for you to like keep that energy up to do that take and you were running okay you were actually running so like you, you got your cardio that day <laughs> oh my gosh running I was like run and, all, and every the director said you of course you're quite fit and I was like yeah because I mean luckily 
luckily I go to the gym mm-hmm. because otherwise I'll be struggling yeah. right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was running um and very hot and very sweaty, but uh, but uh, the makeup artist was there to dab and any. <laughs> And how was that for you, though, having dreadlocks and also like being a black woman? What was your experience? Because, you know, we like your cousin Jordan did his great documentary here on set about, you know, the issues faced with black women on, and black men on like on set. So like, how was that for you going on set with your locks? Were you like apprehensive or anything like that? Like, how was that for you? <laughs> well, I, I got my fr- fresh retwist before okay. going on because oh, like okay. they wouldn't know what they're doing. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, as well, when before you get your retwist. They'll be like, oh, it looks fine. It looks all right. <laughs> like, oh, it does not. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but the lady who done my hair, she wasn't that bad. But the only yeah. thing is, she was the only one that had confidence to do it. And I think that was probably everyone else can kind of go to the different hairdressers. It mm-hmm. was just her who I could go to because she was a little bit more confident than the rest. Okay. And she okay. was even saying to me that it's like, honestly, it's really bad. Mm. There's not enough black hairdressers mm-hmm. in the industry yeah it's just yeah. not enough at all and there's mm-hmm. definitely a problem with it mm-hmm. but yeah she she'd actually done quite a good job like yeah. she was she was she done it really well mm-hmm. and um but she I think and the reason why I think she done it well is because she was confident with it it wasn't just like other people are quite shaky like um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, okay let's maybe mm-hmm. do these twists what do you think the pins I was like yeah this looks nice so mm-hmm. yeah I, I don't want to fault her at all because yeah she was really lovely as well so yeah no, that's really good because you know you hear so much horror stories as well and it's like because it was such a small scene but also the impact of what you were going to do in that moment you know I wanted to know like what was that like so that's good to hear that's good to hear because yeah like when you said about a retwist and stuff like and if it goes oh, looks fine l- I'm going to say this in the most polite way possible but like when non-black people get dreadlocks you don't really see them with a fresh weed twist you know what I'm saying like they don't know about fresh weed twist it's like it's done the first time and it's that's it leave left left and it's looking matted and whatever so so yeah so for that people we know about fresh weed twist we need to get at least maybe two every two months maybe yeah 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 you know what I'm saying like yeah, and it yeah. was like the end of it. So I knew my okay. hair like, wouldn't have a little test run. It was like I knew my hair was messy. Okay, and then I was like, no, it's fine, just okay. leave it the way it is. <laughs> I was like, because okay. you guys don't understand. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. understand what I'm saying. And I think that's what it is <laughs> for language. And I think as well that with that hairdresser, because she was saying that there's not enough black hairdressers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, girl. Okay. Sad. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. But the way that other people were reacting to my hair, mm-hmm. I get that how it could have been problematic mm-hmm. because of the way they were react like if it was if she wasn't there and it was just them doing my hair mm-hmm. it would be like it would be a problem it yeah. would 100 be a problem yeah. yeah so yeah so that's a really good story to hear about your experience on set as well because yeah like I said you just never know and because of such a fast turnaround especially being in production like you know sometimes they have more prep in terms of like <clears throat> the hair and makeup team to know like okay this is going to be the actress. This is the style we're going to kind of figure out. And because it was so fast, they probably were like, oh, shit, we've got this last minute. What are we going to do? Oh, and she probably was like, the one who you were talking about was like, oh, I can do it. It's fine. Like, I'm confident. You know, I could do it. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. Because they just they just don't get it. And a lot yeah. of people will think sometimes, oh, it's like, why don't black people want to be in it? They do want to be in it, but they just don't know about the opportunities to do mm-hmm. it. Like I'm yeah. always telling my barber to do it and now he's been doing stuff as well and I'm trying to get him stuff like because they want to do it but it's like they don't have the opportunities because it's not a some, not in every aspect is it racism it's just more so that when people see themselves represented in a certain way they don't understand the need to get people who represent the people you're casting you know they're just kind yeah. of blind to it so they're not thinking that oh we need to get somebody oh you can get anybody no because not everybody's trained to do it that's the mm-hmm. thing yeah. you know yeah. so that's the thing so but I have seen there's some people who are like um like some black people who created like schools where they're teaching them how to do afro hair and stuff like mm-hmm. that so mm-hmm. it was coming so that hopefully... well, so yeah. to do hair as well which is also great great too which exactly I'm yeah 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 exactly so moving back into your you know children's work how mm-hmm. did you get to write for Peppa Pig 
because as far as I'm concerned, that's huge. Okay. That is massive. Peppa Pig is huge. Okay. So like, how did you get to be writing Peppa Pig travel books? And you've done what, three? Like, this is crazy. No, no, no. I just don't want. I just don't oh, want. okay. Because on your website, I'm doing, you know, doing my deep dive research. You look like it was three. So, okay. Oh, no, just one, just one. That's fantastic. How did that happen? Do you know what? Like, um, so I had a um, meeting or even an interview with, um, Penguin Books okay. and I was like um it was for what was their interview for it was a big deal interview it was like for a commissioner mm. senior commissioner oh, uh, okay. tra trainee commissioner which oh. I've got. I still I still have that dream to be honest oh. with you um and I went got through to the last round but then I didn't get the job but they emailed me saying you know we see you as a creative person instead of we, we're sorry you didn't get the job but could you possibly write a book for us wow yes <laughs> <laughs> okay that like, like okay. why would I <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yes and I didn't like do you know what I mean I didn't really I always think everything happens for a reason one of those things and um I was like, okay, cool. And the next minute the manager emailed me, said this is what, this gave me the brief of what they were looking for. Then yeah, I, I started just wrote, wrote it, but because obviously I'm a creative, I also came up with like some of the concepts for the stickers as well. And they were like, this is perfect. Like, in fact, you're doing way more than you're supposed to do. And I was like, I know, but like everything's visual for me, especially when it comes to children's books. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then they just like, um, a few um, a few months later, it came out. I ran to Waterstones, saw the book there, saw my mm -hmm. little name and the little credits. I was like, yeah, wow. I've done it. And it's on display. Mm -hmm. like, it's, uh, mm -hmm. if, I, if I wasn't blurred, you would see. <laughs> but I have my Disenchanted and my Peppa Pig on display. <laughs> so when Are people come around, they're like, why do you have Peppa Pig book on your... <laughs> like, I wrote it. So, yeah. yeah I'm an so, author. Get it right. Author. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That so, is so yeah. good. So, like, are you planning to write more books and stuff like that for kids' books, or like, what's the plan? Not at the moment, but mm -hmm. it's there. I think because I do a lot, I don't want to like. I I still like to do things strategically mm -hmm. uh, because I'm trying to uh, do this like live show at the moment I don't want to like over exhort myself and I also work full time mm -hmm. and I've got some like family stuff that's going on so I don't want to it's not at the moment yeah okay because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. now you put that in my ideas I'm like <laughs> hmm yeah like, I also wanted to do a black British mm -hmm. history book but then I guess it's, there quite a few have come out quite recently mm -hmm. um I'll figure out something else <laughs> yeah. but the thing is the thing is you can still do it in so many different ways I, an idea just yeah. popped into my head but I'm not going to say it here I'll tell you what okay cool <laughs> <laughs> you know the producer in me is always working but yeah 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 never think that oh it's like an oversaturated market there's always a market do you get what I'm so, saying like there's always like we've always, seen yeah. so many type same things over and over again so it's like you can still make your book and tell it your way and it'll be completely yeah. different you know so so, true. Yeah. yeah so that's really good so what else are you working on because I know you've got this but what else can you share or like what's 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 happening with you um I do want to um start with because my YouTube channel's kind of paused at the moment just because I'm running on loads of different projects mm -hmm. but I really really want to um start mm -hmm. back with my YouTube channel and we're starting we're, we're looking to plan something mm -hmm. called learn with Del Del mm -hmm. so kind of similar to how Miss Rachel is and stuff like that going around to different uh, locations in the UK and teaching children about like you know phonics and mm -hmm other activities but again it's just one of those things where I just need to try and find the time to to film it okay so that's the new project and also having like a just a, pu a, a puppet show um on the youtube channel and also yeah. pitching some puppet shows to broadcasters mm. too okay. uh, um and what else I think my my mind is so consumed on this live show that like yeah. that's kind of the big thing yeah. I, my full-time job is I work at ITV if that's something but I'm an editor there and so that's kind of what's taking up my time at the moment, but Great. it's still quite exciting. Still mm -hmm. trying to keep creating. Okay. okay. Yeah. Nice. So like as a performer, what mm -hmm. kind of role have you ever seen like past, present, like, you know, what's currently airing or what's been in the past, like, would you have liked to have been a part of? Um, Sometimes mm -hmm. 
I think anything that's kind of children's TV related, I've always yeah. like anything that's like Floella, mm-hmm. Floella, Floella Benjamin really inspires me. Okay. Um, so, so anything that's kind of like children's related, children's TV presented related as well, yeah. mm-hmm. definitely, definitely inspires me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was that show, was it called The Box? Like there was some like kids show on Nickelodeon. I think it had like a black guy or mixed race guy. I can't remember what it was called. It's going to annoy me. Was it on BBC? Uh, on Nickelodeon or BBC? Maybe it not, was... Re- not Reggie Apes, was it? No, 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 no. This was like oh. in the 90s. I'm trying to oh. remember what it is. Gosh, let me Ooh, see. Gosh. Can... Let me see if I can Google oh, this while we're... <laughs> I'm trying to think. Let me see if I can Google it while we're here. still, because it was like, and I remember it was like very like I could see you doing something like that. What? Because you you oh. sing and do musicals like that was like a fun. I can't remember. Kids. And I'm like, yeah, I'm looking at looking at all the. Um... Yeah, there was something. It used to be. Yeah, that's it. It was called Out of the Box. And there was a guy, yes. Do you remember it was like called Out of the Box and it was a guy with dreadlocks and an Asian, East Asian woman. Did you ever watch that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Yeah. I could see you doing something like that. Like, because it was like such a good blend of like, you know, current music, but like the way how you have your reggae music and your West Indian culture to mix mm-hmm. it in. I yeah, just, you do something like that, and yeah. you know, I don't understand what happened, but in the nineties, we had such amazing representation, and then it did. Did and I don't and... know what happened. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I could definitely see you do something like that. It definitely, come, it needs to come back. That's what we need to start. Yeah, with, to be yeah, yeah, definitely, um, definitely could see you do something like that. And are there like directors or writers or other like or even companies that you want to work with, like or? Who you're big fans of that you would want to work with in the future as well? Oh, now you're. I mean, oh. I love Ava DuVernay, but that's she's not children's related. But yeah. like, she's definitely yeah. someone who I would like absolutely love to work with. Well, she did do a twinkle. Was it a twinkle in time? So. Oh yeah, know. that's true. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, Ava DuVernay. She like really, really inspires me. Really. Okay. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Else. Anything she's on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, like production that. companies. Oh yeah, I'm not quite sure. Like production oh. company wise. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, that's good. That's good because I really feel like we need something which is for like black girls. Like growing up. I had like Moesha and Sister Sister mm. and then as I was a little bit older we had like One on One and The Proud Family and yes there's The Proud Family reboot which is great but I feel like we need more of that and also like um, for Black British representation like I oh, feel like there okay. needs to be yeah. more I know there's that kids show I think it's like something Grand Grand I can't remember it's gone for Oh like... Jojo Grand Grand Yes that's yeah. great Oh, yeah. But we still need more. I feel like we need more for like just a little bit older, that tween kind of age group as well. So hopefully yeah. these stuff can happen. But these are things we I can so see. so much growing up, didn't we? Yeah, like so we really much. did. But yeah. what's, what's out there now? Like, I mean, it's like, and I think it is like the way how they do kids shows now, I feel like they're a little bit too wacky. If that makes sense. Yeah. So are. like when we were growing up, it was like a good balance. That's mm-hmm. why when we're older, we're able to watch as adults and it's still aged well because yeah. like they've got more young adult themes. So it's like, okay, I still yeah. can enjoy this. So yeah. I can see you doing stuff like that as well for different age groups and stuff like that. For like somebody like you who's a multi hyphenate person and like multifaceted, like you guys can you know, <laughs> tip into like, you, 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 like, inspired me. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> good, oh, good. God. That's how I want. want That's how I want. Like, no, <laughs> listen, in this economy, we all need our jobs. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we all need our jobs. Oh, but I think that's just really good. So it's yeah. just great to hear your story and what you've done mm-hmm. and what you're going to continue to do. So where can yeah. people find you and see your past work and even book you? Okay, yeah, <laughs> to start the group, true. where can they find you and all that stuff? Um, well, my Instagram is literally Delvine. Um, that's my, just my name, D-E-L-V-E-N-E. Um, long story short, I joined Instagram when Instagram first. That's how old I am when Instagram first happens. That's how I managed to get just my name. Um, 
And then my TikTok is Delvine P. So just like literally, I'm very responsive on social media. Mm -hmm. Not so much on TikTok, but Instagram, a little bit more responsive. Okay. Um, so yeah, feel free to just drop me a message and I'll probably respond. Mm -hmm. And where can they find your like YouTube stuff as well? Like your YouTube channel for your shows? <laughs> yeah. Even though they're, oh, you're going to reboot it? It'll be good yes, I am rebooting it. Yeah. yeah. So Little yeah. Crowns uh, Story House was my business company name. But now it's called Learn with Del Del. So that's the rebrand. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Well, this was fun catching up and talking to you. Thanks for coming on the show. So yeah, yeah definitely. So this was good. So guys, you can follow me all of my social socials. You know them. There's a bunch of them. Stay tuned for new episodes coming soon.